Hi, my name is Corey Johnson with DCS, and in today's video, we are going to be going over conditional logic, how and when to use it. Now, conditional logic has a variety of applications, uh, but to summarize, it kind of gives you the ability to add an additional move for a part if a measurement result is out of spec and you want to put it in spec. Uh, this move can adjust the part using different points or features than the original move, and that will in turn turn a measurement that was once out of spec and hopefully get it within specification. Now here's just a little screenshot of where the conditional logic can be found in a move operation. Uh, we'll be going over that in a bit. So in this example, we have part A and part B. And when part A locates to part B, its primary is the big surface here in, uh, in red. So we would have three points there for primary. The side wall here would be secondary. And for tertiary, we actually have two surfaces here in green. Now, because we have these two surfaces for tertiary, you only need one for a move. So the intent here is for part A to be able to contact one of the tertiary surfaces, but never have an interference condition at the other. And we can achieve this with some conditional logic. So our first move is going to use the primary and secondary that we just went over, the main surface here and the sidewall. And we have to pick one of those tertiary surfaces for our first move. In this example, we're going to use this one on the, I guess, the left side in green here. And then what we're going to do is add a, uh, a gap measure to the non-locating surface to determine how much interference there could potentially be. So that's going to look like this. It's going to be a simple point-to-point -point measurement, part A to part B. Uh, we're going to set the spec mode to absolute and then the lower spec just to zero. And what that's going to help us do is any result lower than zero, it's going to let us know if it is interfering or not. So let's go ahead and close the PowerPoint for a second. So we've got our box here. And I'm just going to highlight this original move. We got primary, secondary, and tertiary, where it says T6 there. And I already have this measurement in here. So I'm going to open that up. And that is a simple part A to part B in the uh, PowerPoint, point to point, lower spec zero, uh, spec mode absolute. So when we build this, and I check this. Now again, we're locating over here where my mouse is, but we're gonna check the interference condition here. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead, already nominally built, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run. And I'm gonna open up that measurement. You can see my LSL here. So it's interfering, you know, roughly, you know, roughly 50% of the time, which is a condition that we do not want to have. So I'm going to pop the PowerPoint back open. Okay. So now we're here. This is the result we just looked at. We're interfering about 50% of the time. So now this is going to bring us to move number two. Now, move number two is basically going to be a copy of move number one. Same primary and secondary here. Except we are going to change our tertiary from the original surface, which was over here where my mouse was, to where we are where we added that gap measure. So 
So then we would be, we'd have a one move for one of the tertiary surfaces and a second move for the second tertiary surface. And this is when conditional logic comes into play. So in this second move, the only thing that's gonna be changed is again, is this is green arrow. Uh, it's that tertiary point. So once we have that hooked up, we're gonna to go to our options. And here's where we can find the conditional logic. Now, we only want to locate to this surface if there is an interference condition, because again, that's what we're trying to prevent. So we only want this move to happen or to execute if there is an interference condition. So we already added that get measure which is here. So we have that measurement in our tree. And then we've added this second move and modified the tertiary locating feature. And then we went into our options here. And what we're gonna do is under conditional logic, we're gonna go to the condition and we're gonna hit the drop down, and we're gonna grab that gap measure. And that gap measure, the way we set it up, is telling us that anything out of spec is an interference condition by the way that we set up the measurement, with the lower spec being zero. So we're just going to set that in our condition. And then right here where this arrow is, we just want to make sure that execute if out of specified limits is checked in. Now, what we're telling this move operation to do is use this locating scheme, use this second move if this gap measure is out of spec or if it's interfering. And once we do that, this is a preview of that same measurement that was once 50% uh, interfering 50% of the time is now no longer doing it. So let's go back to the model here. So we just looked at that result. And right now, this measurement, we're interfering 50% of the time. So we don't want that to happen. So I got this move here. I'm actually just going to make a copy of it. Because so much is similar, the only thing that is different is that tertiary locator. So I'm just going to adjust the name really quick. And instead of tertiary one, I want to use tertiary two. So my object is going to be the tertiary two. My target point is going to be that tertiary two. And you can see it highlight here on kind of your middle right. It's going to be highlighting right here. So my tertiary two. Okay, so that's really all I need to change for the move. But I don't want this to override my original move. I just need this to execute if I am getting an interference condition at this feature. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to my options tab here. And I'm gonna to go to my condition. Now you can use the drop down here. In this case, I wanna use this, uh, this second check measure, or you can also use pick from tree and select it here in, uh, in your navigation window. And once I have that measurement selected, again, you just want to make sure you want to tell it to execute if it's out of specified limits. And I'm just reiterating that we are, our measurement is set up to produce a red result, a out of spec result, if there's an interference condition. So this move operation is going to execute when it sees that red result, if you will. So I'm going to say, okay. And now I'm gonna apply and okay. I'm going to update my model. I'm going to, now I'm gonna build again and rerun analysis. And let's go ahead and check in on that original measurement that we added. And you can see that there's a bunch of 
kind of stacked up there near the lower spec limit, but there is no red result showing that the conditional logic is working and we no longer have an interference condition at the surface, at that gap measure, I'm sorry. And this could be done with either or uh, either of these surfaces. I chose to first locate to this surface and measure this one. You could do the exact opposite. You could locate to this and measure here. It would have the same effect. And that is where we end up there. That's going to do it for the conditional logic basic video walkthrough. Um, I thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more as we have more videos coming on this topic using conditional logic. So until then, uh, I appreciate you guys watching and have a great day.